Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. AI Tay for not wanting to tattoo my cousin on his wedding day. I'm a woman and a tattoo artist with four years of experience. I recently opened my own studio. My family and I are heading to another state next week for my cousin Matt's wedding. We received the invitation months ago but Matt recently told me, you're gonna tattoo me on my wedding day. I was caught off guard because I hadn't considered bringing my equipment. I asked him if he had a machine or something, hoping he was joking. He replied, don't you have one, and added that bringing it wouldn't take up much space. I explained that I was not prepared to bring my entire setup, machine, colors, hygiene supplies, stencils, etc. To a wedding where I knew nothing about the venue layout on such short notice. Matt insisted it was important to him, and that I should be the one to do it. This was the first time I had heard of this request. I tried to explain again that I wasn't comfortable with this, especially since I work until we fly out, and designing a tattoo takes time. Matt read my messages but didn't reply. This morning, my mom called me, clearly upset. She asked why I couldn't just make it work and tattoo Matt. I told her the same things I told Matt, but she didn't want to hear it. She said it would be a huge deal for her and Matt's family if I did it and suggested it could be my wedding gift. Then, she abruptly hung up. I talked to my brother about it and he just shrugged, saying it would be nice of me. Now, I'm feeling conflicted. Am I being selfish for not wanting to do this? It seems like everyone wants me to, but I'm unsure whether I should push myself out of my comfort zone in this way. Edit. I already had an actual wedding gift as they sent out a wish list with their invitations. One point on the list was artwork because they recently moved into a bigger house and wanted random artwork to decorate. I spent several days oil painting something for them, so I also didn't plan to give them a voucher as a gift. As far as I know, Maddie doesn't have any tattoos. I'm not sure why my mom is so insistent on this. I think she just wants to keep the peace. The last few hours have been eventful. First, I called my mom and wow, she asked me again, this time very nicely, if I would tattoo Maddie at his wedding. Again, I said no, giving her all the reasons I previously explained, plus some of the very good points you all suggested. Before she could say anything else, I added that I felt she wasn't taking me or tattooing seriously. She didn't say anything for a while, then tried to explain that she thought it wasn't a big deal. I told her it was, and that she of all people, should know how my job works. She agreed and apologized profusely. I then asked her if she'd like to attend one of my client appointments to see me work, and to my surprise, she said yes. Mom is tagging along tomorrow. Now, on to Maddie, or rather, his bride. I finally got hold of the bride. Let's call her Becky, and I asked her about Matt's request. She seemed surprised, as she'd heard from my aunt that I made them something for their new house. She assumed it would be a painting since I'm the artist of the family, and it's known that I also paint. I confirmed that but explained that Matt had come forward with this tattoo idea out of the blue, and it wasn't a good idea for many reasons. She immediately agreed with me, I think she has tattoos. She thanked me for telling her, as no one else did. Becky seemed really mad, but managed to hold it together. I would have lost it. I'm assuming Becky confronted Matt after a call because, about three to four hours later, I checked the family group chat. There, I saw a message from Becky, there will be no ceremony on the 13th as Matt and I have decided we aren't getting married, Matt and I have things to figure out, so please text or call us tomorrow if you have questions, we'll be in flight mode for the rest of the day. After dinner, Becky called me and apologized for Matt again. She said it was his stupid idea, and that he just thought it would be cool. She then informed me that she still wanted me to fly over for the wedding day, as she'd be hosting a party instead of a wedding. Everything is paid for, and she wants nothing to go to waste. I asked if they broke up. Not yet, but I'm staying in my sister's place until next week. I assume Matt hasn't been too great, but I'm sure I'll hear about it soon. Apparently my brother and mom aren't invited, lol. Michael must have been the last straw, but as far as I'm concerned, Becky is handling it gracefully, and Matt will be okay too, I'm sure. So, I'm going to a party. But have I just made a new friend? Because many of you wanted to know how the bring your mom to work day went, I picked her up in the morning, and we headed to the studio. I showed her around, told her a few stories about some of the artworks and photos on our walls, and explained my routine as I prepared everything. My client arrived, and I handled it like I usually would, just with my mom sitting there lol. I explained every step of the process and she asked questions about my ink, needles, technique, etc. It was a lot of fun having her around and she really surprised me with her openness and interest. When I was done, my mom had to leave for work. Still, she thanked and hugged me for bringing her along. She said she enjoyed spending time with me and loved seeing me work professionally. She now sees my work and efforts differently. As for the wedding slash party, the party started at 2.00 p.m. as the ceremony was canceled. I arrived and was immediately welcomed by Becky's sister, who hugged me and helped me with my painting. Everyone was outside, drinking and having small bites already. I went to say hi to Becky and she hugged me warmly. She seemed tired, but otherwise fine. Becky was also smiling a lot, which surprised me I went to mingle as I didn't want to start by questioning her. I met many of her friends and apparently most weren't too fond of Matt. 
I heard a few things about how he tried to change Becky to be more like his ex and stuff like that. Not a great look, Maddie. No friend or relative of Matt's was around, besides me and one other cousin. Later, as we sat down to eat, I asked if I could join Becky's table. They said yes, so I sat with Becky, her sister, and three friends. I introduced myself to one of them, I hadn't talked to him before, and Becky added that I was Matt's cousin, the one who was supposed to tattoo. A simultaneous O oh, came from everyone, and with that, the conversation was about Matt from the get-go. I asked what happened. The sister just rolled her eyes and said, what didn't? Becky and her friends told me that a while ago, Matt apparently started to pick on Becky for being herself in various ways. It started small, like asking her to change her workout routine to only running, then criticizing her cooking because he prefers eating more meat and traditionally. They discussed these topics, and it always seemed fine, but he didn't stop. He asked her to let her hair grow or get extensions and speaking of hair, to lighten it, Becky has shoulder-length black hair. More and more things piled up until he started commenting, can you be more like my ex? He didn't say it specifically but clearly meant it that way. His ex is from Texas. I was shocked and asked why she didn't break up with him earlier. Becky explained that, in the moment, it didn't seem as bad as when you listed those reasons. She had made a few changes to make Maddie happy, but continued to do what she wanted most of the time. Time went on, and the issues resurfaced again and again in different ways. The last big fight was a few weeks ago when Maddie called Becky by his ex's name. They somehow settled this, so let's skip forward to when I called Becky about the tattoo idea. After our call, she approached Matt and asked why he didn't talk to her about it, and why he would just decide to do something like that on their wedding day. He explained that he wanted to surprise her and stuff like that. Becky told him this wasn't happening, and that she wanted to be able to enjoy the wedding and their honeymoon. They seemed to agree in the end, and he apologized. But later, this almost threw me, as Becky was starting to cook dinner and Matt was sitting at the counter, they talked about tattoos again, apparently a really chill discussion about tattoos in general. Becky asked him playfully what he intended to get tattooed. He gestured across his chest and said, I want my birth date, our wedding date, and your birth date. Becky said she went blind for a millisecond. That third date was, in fact, not her birthday. She asked him again, and he repeated the same dates. She then said that this wasn't her birthday, but he persisted that it was and told her to stop trying to fool him. She started to cry and ran to get her purse to show him her driver's license. That's when his face dropped. He tried to escape it by making excuses that he wasn't good with dates, but Becky just went straight to her phone and checked Facebook. She found his ex's profile, showing her birthday. It was the date he would have gotten tattooed on his chest if I hadn't said no and called Becky. My dumbass cousin would have ended up with his ex-girlfriend's birthday next to his wedding date. Becky said she more or less told him it was over and that this was enough. She started to immediately reorganize the whole wedding and honeymoon while kicking him out of the house. A bit later, she called me back. She mentioned that she didn't want to say what happened over the phone as she thought I might tell my family, and she didn't want to hear about it. Fair enough, I get that. Becky changed the honeymoon booking and is now taking her best friend. Also, if you're wondering, Becky's dad currently owns their house, and they agreed to pay him back slowly. Due to his financial stability, this arrangement made more sense. As far as I know, Becky is going to stay there. Anyways, that's the tea, folks. This was a wild ride, and I'm pretty sure Becky and I will be good friends, we hit it off. I don't have much sympathy for Matt, so I'm not sure I'll stay in touch with him. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.